Well, Maslin, this was it. One final defensive stand for Maslin's greatest defense ever, and then 15,000 people go nuts inside Canton's Hall of Fame Stadium. Players storm the field to celebrate what they've finally done, and then the city throws a summer-long party for everyone. Each fan wakes up every morning and practices their T.I.G. chant. No, seriously. And so now, all the years of heartbreak after heartbreak are now a thing of the past, and for the first time in more than 50 years, Maslin will be labeled as the defending state champion all season long. Anyone who knows me knows that I am a Maslin all-time hater. But even having said that, I do not wish misery on anyone. Last year, I had many videos go viral. The Valdosta video has 145,000 views. St. Ed's has 95,000. The Maslin-McKinley game has nearly 30,000. All we did was sit in our seats the whole game. Dog chain. I read hundreds and hundreds of comments every day from Maslin grads from all over. Each one seemed to give me their graduation year and current location update as if they were reporting for duty. Most of them mentioned their mother or father or their grandmother or grandfather and how they're old and they wish nothing more than to see Maslin win it all before they pass away. That hits home for me. We all have had grandparents or great-grandparents or whoever who have passed away wishing nothing more than the Browns to win the Super Bowl finally or the Indians to win the World Series again. And while there's still hope technically for the Browns, we will never see the Indians win a World Series. That was me watching the 2016 Cavs come back from 3-1. I spent my whole childhood rooting for the Cavs during LeBron's first stint in Cleveland just to have that ripped away from me. And then 2016 came and seemed surreal to my adult self. Maslin had a similar issue. After losing three straight state title games in three years, and they were facing a 50-plus year title drought. Maslin finally made it back to the title game and pulled off the unthinkable. I'll tell you what, for 50 years, Maslin, you've heard the talk that you never won one on the field. Well, the final results of this game say that talk is over. So let me officially speak on behalf of myself and this channel when I say congratulations to the city of Maslin. Congratulations to all the players, all the coaches, most of the fans, and yes, even the former Tigers, especially the ones who felt the immense pressure from an entire city needing you to bring home a playoff era trophy just to fall short. Congratulations to you as well. If there's anything that Maslin fans love more than their Tigers, it's wearing Tiger gear to the Belden Village area and other parts of Star County. So go check out the Tiger store slash Simon Says Promotions slash Spirit of Stark for any of your Tiger needs. They got all your state title stuff, so get that while you guys are still defending the crown. They have mugs, blankets, all sorts of stuff. There's apparently even a frickin' puzzle. Trust me. They can't wait to see you. But speaking of Maslin defending their crown, they sure have a tough road ahead of them, and it actually starts out in Oregon this year. Week one, Maslin travels all the way out to what is basically the Nike headquarters to take on the NFL Academy. As far as I know, it's supposed to be nationally televised. Week 2, Maslin goes to Glen Oak, who is clearly making a comeback as a program. Week 3, Maslin takes on Bergen Catholic out of New Jersey. This could be a top 10 matchup by time the game happens, and it might be the national game of the week. 
Then that New York team comes back into town. No one seems to know how to pronounce it, so I'll just move on. And then week five, Maslin will get on the buses and travel with their bandwagon up to St. Ed's. And yes, we will be there. There will be a Bulldog license plate in Lakewood that night. This once again will probably be the biggest game in the state for the year for many reasons. St. Edward has won the last three state championships in Division I, boasting a 15-1 record each of those seasons. So they've had three losses the last three years. The two of them are at Maslin the last two years in games that were decided in the final minute essentially. And the third loss was to Moeller in overtime three years ago. They have won seven state championships since winning their first in 2011, and they are 149 and 25 over that period. Maslin won its first playoff era state championship last year when they went 16 and 0. Over that same time span since 2011, Maslin boasts a 133 and 34 record. Maslin had a lot of chippy moments last year with opponents at the end of games, and this was one of them. And so, to continue the schedule, Maslin has three home games in a row against a team from Maryland, Clarkson Football North from Ontario, who I've seen play in the past, and then a team from Miami. Week 9, Maslin travels to Warren to take on Warren Harding. And then, of course, Week 10, McKinley comes to Paul Brown. People tend to ask for my predictions when I make these videos, and I never include it. Uh, you know, 8-2, and 9-1, and one. what else do you think I'm going to say? I've been told by my Maslin insider that Maslin is not just looking to win again, but they are looking for a three-peat. The three-peat would tie McKinley's three playoff era state titles, and it would also, in their eyes, one-up McKinley's back-to-back -back titles from 97 and 98. Please let me know what's on your mind in the comments. Will Maslin win some more hardware this season now that the monkey is finally off the back? If you want to check out the playlist of every Maslin-McKinley game I've ever uploaded, click here. And if you want to check out your Tigers winning season last year that I've put together, click here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button as it helps us in the long run. Give us a like, give us a comment, and as always, thanks for watching.